All right, welcome to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is episode number 743. All kinds of good stuff happening today on the show. Thanks for joining me. Let's give a shout out to the new Patreoners, patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Bonus episodes galore. Occasional cool Zoom fest. Hold on, let's get the new Patreoners. Patreoners, Chris Doherty, thank you. Frank Arroyola, Christopher Bath, thank you so much for joining on. Um, also, I want to give a, a big shout out to my sponsor. You've been seeing some of those jacket posts I've been putting up on Instagram. That's all from standardandstrange.com. And they are running a deal today until midnight. This is insane, actually. 25% off everything. Just use the code ECONOMY, E-C-O-N-O-M-Y, ECONOMY. And it goes till midnight California time tonight. 25% off. Get the fuck out of here, man. That's, uh, that's just incredible. And uh, they're doing that. Because uh, they know the economy is a little rough and they're giving a little uh, love out to all the Dell Razors out there or the Dell Ray Guns. Somebody posted that up. Yeah, coming out, killing with my Dell Ray Guns. And then uh, don't forget uh, the newer one I came up with. The older fans are the Dell Raisins. <laughs> you got the Dell Razors? who are just out there like, fuck yeah, I'll go see you wherever you're at. I'll fly to fucking Kentucky. Then you got the Dell Raisins on the couch that are like, dude, you know, I'll catch you next time, man. Next time you come to uh, Akron, Ohio. You Dell Raisers, show them how it's done. Dell Raisins. I don't know. I'm fucking out of my mind today. Uh, it's fucking dumb April Fools. April Fools. I don't even know what the fuck the history is of that. And uh, it's just, you know, the annoying day on, on social media now. Back in the day, you just got like one dumb April Fool's joke from some somebody at your fucking, you know, job down at the Home Depot. Just walking with a two by four. Leo lost his arm. You fucking run to aisle four. April Fool's. Now it's like. All day long on the dumb social medias. Anyway, Grumpy Dean is here. Moving slow today. I don't know why. It fucking rained again all weekend in L.A. Just insane. Every weekend. Just pouring rain. I've, I've never seen this much rain in L.A. Uh, since I've lived here. 22, 3 years, something like that. Let me get a hit off my fucking ginger tumor. Excuse me while I hit on my ginger turmeric. Ah, Diamond Dave, drinking tea in the morning. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Ah. Mm. There it is, a little turmeric tea. Anyway, good to be alive. Good to be alive, good to be awake. The sun is out today, and uh, we all survived Easter, right? The Easter bunny. That is fucking lunacy, right? The Easter Bunny. If you're single, never been married, no kids, you don't do anything on Easter except enjoy yourself. Maybe uh, watch a little fucking, uh, I don't know, hoops. You guys out there watching hoops, baseball? Slow time of the sport, right? Uh, Giants got their ass kicked yesterday, San Francisco Giants. No matter how long I live in L.A., I... I'm I'm a Giants fan till the day I die. Which shout out to the A's fans that boycotted uh, going into the home opener at the A's Coliseum. Which you know I thought it was all the fans, and I thought that's pretty fucking cool. They're all out in the parking lot giving the middle finger to the owner, and then they show the game, and there was thirteen thousand fans in there, and I thought. I don't know. That's about what the A's draw these days. So I don't, I don't know. It wasn't really a boycott. Maybe there was a couple hundred people in the parking lot. Maybe they didn't even have tickets. 
but uh, 13,000 is a lot for an A's game. They've had like attendance, uh, low records last year of like 7,000. You imagine you're in a fucking stadium where Zeppelin played their last shows ever. And there's only 7,000 people in there. That reminds me of when I went to go see uh, Sabbath on the Born Again tour, which is, of course, one of the greatest records Sabbath ever made. And uh, fantastic Ian Gillen on vocals. I went to the Cow House to see him, and there was no tickets sold. I told this story before, but if you're a new listener, uh, ticket scalpers were out there. They couldn't get rid of the tickets so they went in and it was only about i'd say about six thousand in there and it holds fourteen thousand. so it was just grimly dead in there and fights were breaking out somebody got stabbed altamont style anyway the a's uh i guess they're moving to to vegas we will see today is the last day of the tropicana hotel in vegas and that really was um, where I did some of my first Las Vegas gigs at the Laugh Factory there. And, you know, it was bizarre back then because I was fairly new comedian. I don't know, maybe five years in, I'm headlining out there. And my name was on the fucking Vegas Strip. You driving down the Strip and you just see giant signs of your face. Pretty fucking wild to think about, but uh, they're going to implode that fucker. I would not mind watching that thing get imploded except for uh, the asbestos that's going to be fucking flying out of there. This was the last time I worked at the Vegas Las uh, uh, Las Vegas Laugh Factory at the Tropicana. I remember I went down to the employee lounge and they had it all tarped off. And these guys were Marin, wearing Marin. These guys were Marin. <laughs> these guys were wearing masks. This is way before COVID. These are early mass settlers. And uh, they're in there wearing masks. And I'm eating. And I, I look at the guy. And I go, hey, uh, what are they doing over there? And he goes, asbestos removal. And he just said it like it was totally fucking normal. And I was like, oh, there's like five years off my life right there. Because there was like a breeze coming down the hall. The workers were wearing fucking hazmat suits and masks. And here we are just 10 feet away eating our breakfast. And uh, I was like, yeah, I won't be back here. These people don't give a fuck about humans. It was nuts, man. Anyway, Tropicana, rest in peace. It was one of the cool ones. I think it was the second casino in Vegas. And it, you know, originally was the biggest, had a giant golf course, 18 hole out there where uh, the MGM is now. So uh, it's got a lot of fucking history. They might find some bodies under that fucker. You never know. Little mafia holes in the desert. <laughs> if you saw a casino. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm feeling better right now. A little hit off that fucking ginger turmeric tea and uh, some April Fool's fucking Rage Ralph, Rage Ralph's, some April Fool's fucking, I don't know what I'm saying, man. Anyway, thanks for tuning in last week. Neil Francis was on. What a great human, great musician. Sad day a couple of days ago. We lost the great Lou Gossett Jr. And, uh, it, you know, it hit me. He was 87. And he had definitely, I watched it again today, the uh, famous clip from Officer and a Gentleman. Tons of clips in that movie. That movie is a masterpiece. Uh, Lou Gossett Jr., Richard Gere, and... Uh, Sigourney Weaver, what a name, right? Sigourney Weaver. This movie came out in, I believe, 78. And I saw it in the theater. And uh, it blew my fucking mind. 
It, it is an incredible film. And you dive down a rabbit hole when someone passes away. Rest in peace, the great Lou Gossett Jr. He won an Academy Award for this role as the drill instructor at the boot camp. And interesting facts about that film was Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Man, you know, it's funny. Like, I think about Jack Nicholson, man. Like, all the great films he did. And then there's the films he turned down. And this is one of them. Uh, he turned down the role as the drill instructor. And, um, you know, they were scrambling to get somebody. He went down, the director went down to San Diego to a boot camp, and he found out that the best drill instructors were African-Americans at this particular boot camp. So he said, well, shit, I want to make this as real as I can. And he got Lou Gossett Jr., who... It is just a fucking stunning role, a stunning performance. Now, I knew Lou, uh, not personally, but I knew about him from the 77 kick-ass film, The Deep, also wrote by Peter Benchley, the Jaws King. And it was interesting because now I started thinking about The Deep last night. And, you know, spoiler alert, Lou Gossett gets his fucking eye bit out by a moray eel in this film uh, with Nick Nolte. And, uh, you know, they're out, they're tourists that stumble across this morphine uh, treasure under the ocean, these small bottles of morphine. And then these, uh, these hooligans, these gangsters, uh, want to want to you know take it from them? That's basically kind of the the uh, the premise of the deep. So I knew about him from the deep, and I was obsessed with the uh, fucking fish movies after Jaws in '75, and you know Peter Benchley. So I went and saw the deep. Then I I find out about Lou Gossett, and then I see this fucking masterpiece, and uh, learn so much about life from this officer and a gentleman film all kinds of shit the clothing's amazing the performances are amazing the story's incredible and we all know if you saw the film one of the greatest scenes in the history of cinema is these two fuckers fighting in this uh kind of uh octagon Pre-UFC, no cage, just a square in a big giant airplane hangar, and they just go at it, fucking karate style. Great. Lou Gossett's a fucking ball buster, man. And he wins the Academy Award, which is fucking well deserved. A lot of stuff about him I didn't know, which is crazy. He went to Woodstock, which is amazing. And I love, I love that, that he went, you know, he, he was born in Brooklyn. And uh, he said straight up in an interview, yeah, we were all uh, pushing the boundaries and uh, wanted, wanted change. And uh, we went out there and we found it, which is cool. But something I didn't know about him, a couple things. He was offered the, uh, the role in Brian's song. Remember that movie? That's an old 70s tearjerker. And he was training for it. And three days before they begin to shoot, he tears an Achilles heel. There's my goddamn phone beeping. Come on, Dean, be professional. You're doing a podcast. Can't you just fucking mute your phone? I just muted it for you. Anyway, he's offered that role and he pulls his, uh, tears his Achilles heel or whatever. And the, the, uh, the producers promise him Look, we'll find you something else later down the road. And he was so depressed. He was like, fuck, that was my shot. I was going to be fucking, I was going to be on TV. I was going to do a movie. And five, six years down the road, those producers did Roots and gave him the leading role as Fiddler, which absolutely exploded his career. So, wow, wild shit. Um, you know. But the main thing to me is 
that that officer and a gentleman, man, as I watched the clips this morning, I want to watch the whole film again. I've seen it so many times. It was one of those ones where I would go to Blockbuster. It wasn't even Blockbuster. It was like whatever the family owned one on my block was. That when you just walk down, you know, hey, you got a late charge and you didn't rewind. Be kind, rewind. We got to we got to charge you for your late charge. You have $72 on ET. You had it for a month. Yeah, but the video only cost like $40. Yeah, well, you got to pay this. Uh, you got to pay this fucking late fee. And then you didn't rewind it. So that's another dollar fifty. Fuck you. <laughs> Give me officer and a gentleman. Well, you've seen that 10 times. I don't care. It's a good film. I'm going to watch it again. Have it back by Monday. <laughs> Fucking insane. Video stores, VCRs, Betamax. The old war back then. Walkmans. I saw a clip on Instagram of somebody putting together a Walkman from scratch parts. And it just threw me into the greatest memory of all time. When the Walkman came out, that was it for me, man. I had the Sony Walkman, and eventually it came with auto reverse. But the first one was just that silver Walkman. You got the fucking headphones under your hat. You could be in class at school. Teachers up there just fucking slinging bullshit. You got your headphones on, just sneaking some Scorpions blackout album, right? The fucking Walkman. Once in a while, I'd eat your cassette. You'd cry, get the pencil, try to fix it. But the Walkman was the original freedom machine for me. I could walk to school and no longer was I just fucking hearing those goddamn noises of doubt in my head. I could drown him out with the Sony Walkman. Yes, the depression would slip away for a while as I put in, if you want blood, you got it, and walk to school. <laughs> the Walkman, man, what a fucking invention. It's, it's hard to believe how simple that was, but how great that was back then. To have a small cassette player, and then the disc man came, which was garbage until they got rid of the anti-skip or they got anti-skip. Sorry. The disc man, you just fucking move one inch. It was ridiculous. You ever get in a buddy's car back then and they would have the disc man Velcroed onto their fucking Datsun B210 dash. <laughs> You're just cruising around with your disc man feeling like a goddamn rich person. Cause D or uh, CDs were $28 or $22. Anyway, long live the fucking Walkman, but most important, shout out to one of our greatest actors of all time, Lou Gossett Jr. Great footage of him when he wins that Academy Award. He's just blown back like, holy shit, I got it. And uh, his role is amazing. And they're the fucking, those guys' bodies, man, they were just completely ripped, Bruce Lee style. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Anyway, just had to give him some, uh, some glory. Let's look at, like, oh, here's one last fucking story about him. This one's gonna fucking, this one blew my head off. Okay, he went to Woodstock. He was offered, or he landed Brian's song. But this one, okay, Lou Gossett was at a party with the Mamas and the Papas on August 9th, 1969. If that date sounds familiar, it's because you're a fucking weirdo and you know Manson stuff. Anyway, he's at this party with the Mamas and Papas hanging out, and somebody invites him to another party at Sharon Tate's house. And Gossett's like, all right. I'm going to go to that party, but I'm, I'm going to shower before I go over there because I've been fucking partying all day here with the Mamas and Papas. So he goes home and showers, and he turns on the news, and he sees the um, broadcast on the Tate murders. Manson, he was almost there. 
That is a fucking story, man. That's like one of those ones where uh, that's like the Buddy Holly, you know, that's the the Waylon Jennings, you know, gave up his seat. Or, you know, any story like that where you missed your flight and that fucking flight went down or something. You were almost murdered by a Manson family. Man, that's fucking crazy. In 69, we wouldn't have had the deep. We wouldn't have had roots. We wouldn't have had officer and a gentleman. The most important, we wouldn't have him. It was fucking just a, a goddamn saint. 87 years old. I'll take that. I will take 87 because I was reading recently. I read two days ago. The average American's uh, lifespan now is 76. This shit, we have more medical science and more technology than ever. And uh, we have the fucking poison food. You know, it's insane. People aren't working out. There's like, uh, I think I talked about this. It's like 80 units in my building. And there's a gym. No one in there. All you got to do is ride the elevator down and work out. It's the easiest, besides having a gym in your apartment, it's the easiest commute to a gym and no one's in there. It's going down, people. Pretty soon they're going to be like, uh, average lifespan's about 50 years old, you know. Uh, you know, that's just what we're eating now. Plastic, everything, everything is plastic. Everything is sugar. Everything is salt. Okay. Lots to talk about here. Let me check my chart for you guys right here and go over some stuff. Uh, oh, Easter was yesterday, and I was talking about that a little bit. Like, if you don't have kids, or if you're not married, it doesn't really matter. You just enjoy your life on Easter. The bunny, all that crazy shit. But if you want to hear a fucking funny Easter story, go back and listen to my episode with my former boss at Harley-Davidson, Garo Artunian. Because Easter is probably, speaking of dead uh, dead Americans early, the um, Easter of, uh, I don't know, maybe 16 years ago was probably when diabetes started to slowly take uh, place in my body. Because the boss, uh, it wasn't the boss, probably it was uh, probably this other lady there that uh, worked there that was always super cool. Somebody brought in a box of white chocolate rabbits. I like white chocolate and dark chocolate rabbits. And they weren't the bullshit ones. You ever get those chocolate rabbits where they're hollow? You just buy it and it just crumbles. You know, those, it was just like, there was nothing. It was just a shell of a rabbit and you bite the chocolate and just crumble. But these were the fucking... They spent the extra 39 cents and got the solid chocolate ones. So everybody ate up the dark chocolate, but no one touched the white chocolate. People were like, ew, white chocolate's gross. And me growing up uh, around uh, probably my mom who was, had weird tastes like myself, I loved white chocolate. I grew up on some white chocolate. I'll, I'll fucking tear up some white chocolate. It's got a different kick-ass taste. So there was a box of those things over there, and there each one was one pound solid chocolate rabbits. And I remember in one day I ate three of those. That's three pounds of white chocolate. And for the next week, these white chocolate rabbits became my lunch and dinner in between sling and bikes. I would just go, I'd be talking to a customer. Who's buying a Harley? We come down, yeah. I want to be like Sons of Anarchy, man. I want fucking, I want to be Sam Crow. I need a goddamn uh, Harley Dyna. And he's looking at me, and I'm just chewing on a white chocolate rabbit. Yeah, man, this one right here, Jax Teller would ride this one. You know, this is the one you want. Or maybe the Opie Mobile over here. Grow your beard out and get a vest. And some high risers, man. 
I just eating this fucking white chocolate Easter bunny in front of this fucking guy. Oh my God. And I remember that after I ate the three, I, I had to go home. I was kind of like, Ugh, I gotta go home. I don't feel good. So that was definitely early diabetes. And while I was eating that uh, white chocolate rabbits, I was uh, polishing it off with some fucking food truck quesadilla and a rice pudding they sold and a, uh, a big old fucking Arizona iced tea. Just millions of grams of sugar going through the Dean body, just <sighs> completely destroying me. God damn it. So Easter always reminds me of those white chocolate rabbits that I ate. Garl Artunian is the episode. Go back. Because Garl had a great memory. Garl has a really good memory, man. And uh, he didn't do uh, pounds of uh, drugs like me. So he uh, he remembers it quite well. And it is a fucking funny, funny story. That whole episode is great. Just Garl reliving the lunacy of me and my first kind of real long job after playing music working at Harley Davidson, basically right before I start comedy and just, uh, you know, like, yeah, I guess I work every day now, seven days a week for commission. Anyway, go back and check that out. Happy Easter. If that's the thing you do people, um, a great anniversary happened over the weekend. And, uh, it's the 35th anniversary of one of the greatest records in my collection. I don't have any records anymore, but vinyl, it was in there and it was played quite a bit. It's the Keith Richards Talk is Cheap album. And uh, that thing turned 35. Let me look this up right here. This record, if you think about it, if there was like... Um, let me find it. Talk is cheap. If there was like some kind of competition, you know, wait, hold on now. Keith Richards. Keith Richards, Siri. There we go. If there was a competition between Keith and Mick, uh, Keith won when it comes to the solo stuff. Because, you know, Mick had that She's the Boss record, but nothing comes close to this talk is cheap record. And, um, oh my God, it's so fucking good. It's funny because I saw him solo tour, uh, Bill Graham Civic, Keith Richards. And it was just fantastic, man. Talk is cheap. All right. Came out in 1988. This says October 3rd, but I don't know. I'm going off of what Keith Richards said on his Instagram, 35 year anniversary. Um, a couple of days ago, who knows? I should have Wikipedia because people will hit me up like, Hey dude, it's actually, uh, you're wrong on that. I'm just going off fucking Keith Richards, Instagram, but you have struggle. Oh, and he played SNL on this record. It's just incredible. It's, it's incredible. And, uh, struggle, uh, make no mistake unbelievable tune you don't move me anymore which was long rumored to be uh his pop shot at mick jagger and uh locked away this whole record is killer it was done up there at the site where pearl jam did the vitalogy record in uh the mill uh what is it marin county hills and the site is also where uh I filmed a little bit of uh, some Limp Biscuit documentary back in the day. Unbelievable record. Killer album cover. Showing off perfectly that weird bracelet he's wore all his life and that crazy pig skull ring. And you got to think about, man, that's basically where people think the stones are over. You know? There's been a few times where it looks like they were going to be over in those back in those days. You know, the time Keith got busted for the heroin 
in uh, Toronto or whatever. I've been watching all week uh, this new documentary that's coming out May 3rd, I believe, Anita Pallenberg documentary. And it is fucking fantastic to see this woman basically blow through the stones. She starts out with uh, Brian Jones, then goes to Keith, then does this movie, the performance with Mick Jagger. It kind of seemed like they might have fucked. She didn't really say, but I think I think they did. Mick fell in love with her. Anyway, eventually she uh, stays with Keith. Brian Jones drowns in the pool. Maybe he was murdered, a.k.a. allegedly. I don't know. All of that fucking crazy dark era of the Stones. But to see this documentary and this woman basically is the muse for a lot of Keith's songs, you know? Um, and then when she goes and sticks with Keith, Mick writes, you can't always get what you want. It's crazy how one woman in that era, you're in the fucking giant band, the Stones, and one woman could dominate a band. Man, there's so many beautiful women out there. They're like, oh, this one, and, and you know, Keith was so shy. It wasn't like, you know, he was just like, she was teaching him, you know, the, the world of art. She was hanging with Andy Warhol. Who wasn't hanging with Andy Warhol back then, huh? Tell me that. <laughs> anyway, this is a great fucking documentary. It's coming out May 3rd in the theater, done by Magnolia, who's done all the great music documentaries over the last, I don't know, five, 10 years. And fascinating story. She had three kids with Keith. And uh, Keith has long said that he still loves her. You know, he, she, it, it's wild, man. It is wild. And not really my type, man. You know, I thought Mick had the, had the one, Bianca Jagger. She was kind of more kind of fucking mysterious and uh, international flavor. But uh, I get it. Uh, I get it. You know, she, uh, Anita seemed cool hanging out, Mary and Faithful. That's who Sister Morphine's about, Anita. She was coming off fucking heroin when uh, she was first pregnant. Doctors gave her some uh, morphine. <laughs> Here, this will help you. Hey, isn't that also an opiate? I don't know. Loving it. She wrote this uh, autobiography, her own, and they put it away and never shopped it around. When she passed away, they found it, the kids. And so Scarlett Johansson is reading as, you know, as Anita. She's reading the book, and it's fantastic. There's also, I haven't seen this yet, the Carol Dota documentary and that whole history of San Francisco and the strip joints for the sailors back then. And the fight to uh, show your tits, you know, it's a, a wild, wild story. Lars Ulrich, the people, uh, the, the the drummer that people love to hate and the guy I love, Lars Ulrich, produced this thing and it's out in the theaters right now. And my buddy went and saw it and said it's fucking good. So Carol Dota documentary. I watch documentaries. How annoying are we after we watch a documentary? Just walking around like we know shit. You know, like, hey, Tom, don't drink water. Didn't you see Water Time on Hulu? <laughs> anyway, so uh, watch for that. And then go back and rock talk is cheap, man. Yeah, I mean, there is, it is insane that Keith is still alive. He is fucking beating everyone. Him and Willie Nelson. It is unreal. Keith is 80 and just fucking about to go back out on tour. God, I love Keith. There's so many different Keith eras. My favorite is probably the Tattoo You era. Because, you know, it, it's just tough to beat that cool Keith on the tattoo to, I mean, tattoo you era. And, uh, I mean, there's a, you know, 75 Keith is cool during the, uh, black and blue era, but 
What's your favorite, Keith? Leave it in the uh, comments on uh, iTunes or YouTube. Oh, by the way, the YouTube, the iTunes comments have been fucking uh, picking up. And I want to say thank you right now. And let's just read a quick one because this is so fucking cool. Uh, like I said, if you leave the fucking reviews, it helps the show. It really does. It puts it in the algorithm and then people get suggested. Um, here's a new new review. Where, there's a new review. Ba, 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 ba. Can't fucking find it. Here it is. New review by the man, not the myth, Hammy Colo, a walking encyclopedia of all things vintage music, LA, Frisco scene, Frisco scene, guitar, strap a motor to it, danger guy, and American treasure walks amongst us. Thank you for all your content, Maestro. Thank you, Hammy. Very cool. Next one, fire and beards. This podcast is fire. Five stars. Just listen to episode 741 with Feel, the new band Feel. Thanks for sharing the new killer band. Keep them coming, brother. Killer Craig. Killer Craig. Dean is my favorite comedian and podcaster. Great topics, interesting interviews, guests, and I love your style, brother. Light the candles. All right, there you go. Thank you for those fucking cool ass reviews. Leave them on iTunes and subscribe to the uh, to the YouTube. I want to give a uh, shout out to a new denim store that I went to, uh, that I was uh, turned on to by uh, Standard and Strange. I was out there in New York for a week, which was just fucking amazing, hanging out with Keith Robinson and Bill Burr and. Uh, seeing some old friends, Rami Youssef, who's fucking just fantastic comedian. He hosted SNL. Congrats to that, my friend. Um, but I was at Standard and Strange, and they turned me on to this new denim, Free Note. It's a place here in L.A. who gets Japanese denim and then sews it right here in L.A. They make all kinds of great clothes right in L.A., handmade, and then... Uh, they sell them at the shop in Highland Park or online, go to their Instagram or at Standard and Strange. So I went in there, got some denim, and I'm going to uh, wear it for a year and see what it looks like. I've uh, started to change uh, my denim taste. That's what happens. You get older and you're like, oh, eh, I want to maybe go maybe a little bit different look. Maybe I'll go this M65 taxi driver jacket. I don't know. Just got to fucking mix it up. So I went in there, got a pair of denim, and and I looked to the right, and they had Red Wings. And I haven't owned Red Wings. Really, I owned one pair of Red Wings for about a month and sold them. They were just too narrow. And I always loved Red Wings. And people always say, recommend a boot that's not crazy money. Okay, well, Go Ruck is the first boot I would recommend because it's about 180 bucks. It's waterproof and lifetime warranty. And I had those owners on the podcast. And it's a collaboration between this Vietnam vet and the guy that invented the Reebok pump sneaker. And they made the most comfortable boot I've ever owned for walking and talking. <laughs> it's called Go Ruck. Now, that's about 180 bucks. And that's, I, I can wear that uh, boot in the gym. It's made for rucking. And it is a, an amazing boot. But next up, for around the $300 range, I would recommend this boot I just got. The Ironheart, not Ironheart, dummy, that's a denim. The Red Wing Iron Ranger. This boot is incredible. They got out. They just came out with one with a Christy sole, and uh, I bought a pair, and I've been wearing it for like five days now, and they're just amazing. I got them at Free Note while I was in there getting my denim hemmed, because I got the twenty-seven inch legged inseam. I'm a shorty, ladies. You hear that? Yeah, quit being picky. 
Shorty is in the house. What's up, Shorty? <laughs> anyway, so I got these boots, and oh man, you can see a picture of them on my Instagram. They're fucking fantastic, man. They're that classic kind of orangey color, Irish setter or whatever it is. And man, and they make it in a, a dark brown also. Which, by the way, I want to give a shout out coming up. I've talked about it over the years. The Inspiration Japanese Clothing Show is coming up on April 12th and 13th in Pasadena. I will be there. And uh, this thing over the years has been fantastic. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like this year. But if you want to get into all things uh, handmade and, and amazing goods, go to Inspiration. Put on by the great fucking, uh, oh, I'm going to forget his name right now, uh, Rin Tanaka. <laughs> Brain worked. And it's a great, great event. Denim, leather, people that nerd out on clothes, art. There's all kinds of stuff at this. Inspiration. Pasadena, April 12th and 13th. Come on out. I will be there. I'll be there signing autographs. <laughs> no, I won't. I'm not fucking. I just say that. I just sound like those guys on the radio. And you can come on out and catch me. I'll be signing autographs from two to five at the uh, at the uh, Real McCoy's booth. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so I'm going to that. But I wanted to give a shout out to Free Note. Great, great great place i also want to give a shout out speaking of handmade and uh i had to get a mattress recently because i moved i got a new place that i love and i go okay i'm gonna live here till i die so let's get the last mattress so i went to a place in pasadena called custom mattress company and these people make mattresses right in la and they are above anything i've ever seen Unbelievable, all natural inside, horse hair, um, alpaca wool, full organic cotton. This ain't no bullshit latex beds, man. Not, not any of those companies that are like, we'll send you a mattress for uh, $2,000 and it comes in a box and, and you open your door, it's in a box and you open and it fucking opens like those Jiffy Pop. Then you lay on it. You're like, this thing's like a fucking bogus futon. <laughs> futon. Futon. Good band. You ever see Futon? Yeah, they opened for Caius back in 90. Anyway, uh, Custom Mattress Company. And it's not, a, um, it's not a sponsor or anything. I just was blown away by the quality of this mattress. And also, free note, they're denim blown away people are doing some fucking good good shit out there and uh it makes me so happy when you can see some great quality shit that's not your fucking walmart bullshit made in china garbage you know unreal and it's inspiring man this mattress these people free note standard and strange these guys inspire me all the time I see them, they're, they're, they're passionate about what they do, and I love it, man. If I wasn't a comedian, I'd probably work at Standard and Strange and just fucking chew off people's ears like, dude, man, you got to get this fucking, you got to get this new free note denim, 13 ounces. I'm doing an imitation of me. Dude, 13 ounces, fucking killer. Check it out. Put it on, dude. Oh, fucking fire. Shit, it's killer, dude. Oh, man, Freno. Put it on with a real McCoy's fucking... Oh, this thing's a 10. This fucking M65. <laughs> yeah, fuck all y'all. All right. Anyway, so big love to them. Um, I got my uh, ticket to go see Dead & Co. 4th of July. I'm headed out to the Sphere again. And I kind of want to go to Vegas to see... Um, scorpions they're doing a um they're doing a residency out there in the next couple of weeks and they're doing the love is first sting record 
from top to bottom. Great fucking record. That's the last good one. That is the last good Scorpions record. It's crazy. You go Love Drive. Of course, the Uli Ross shit's amazing. But you get into that Love Drive, Animal Magnetism, Blackout, Love at First Sting. What a fucking run. They go from opening for Ted Nugent at the Cow Palace on the Love Drive record, which I saw him, to headlining on the Love at First Sting record at the day on the green unreal. And that's the day that Metallica played with uh, Cliff Burton. And the day I always said the changing of the guard, just think about that in a five year period, Scorpions go from opening for Ted Nugent at the cow palace to fucking headlining the Oakland A's Coliseum where Metallica was on the bill second. And then Metallica just a few years later headlines that motherfucker on their own. Unreal to see that traje- trajectory, trajectory. <laughs> I can't talk. I can't talk. I know fucking 50 words. Fire. Killer. You're crazy. Anyway. I wouldn't mind seeing the Scorpions play that Love It First Sting record. They're going to do the Love It First Sting record, and then they'll do some uh, of the hits. And, man, you could probably get out there, get out of the venue right be play, before they play that. Ooh, Gorky Park. What a fucking stink. Down to Gorky Park. If anybody ever pisses you off, just do that whistle and it'll be stuck in their head all day, you know? Down to Gorky Park. Which, by the way, Klaus, hold on, I looked it up. Fucking Klaus is like goddamn 76 or something. Let me look at this. And I'm watching him rehearse. Of course, I can hear some tracks in the background or something. Uh, on their Instagram, they're rehearsing. And uh, here it is, right? He's 76, man, next month. Down to Gawky Park. Remember Herman Zajamin was their drummer? They've had so many members, the Scorpions, and no one even cares. You're like, okay, there's Klaus. They've been a band since the 60s, which people don't even know. I watched their documentary on Amazon. It's it's not very good, the documentary, but great history. But, I mean, they've had a million members. It's crazy. Anyway, they're playing in uh, at Planet Hollywood in Vegas. I would not mind seeing that. Might be fucking cool to go see that. Down to Gorky Park! <laughs> All right, guys, Um, that is my uh, stories today. Tour dates are all over the website. So many great tour dates, man. Uh, I hope you can make it out. Let me get them here for you. Coming up is uh, San Diego, May 10th, two shows at the mic drop. Can't wait to do that. Two in one night, uh, May 10th. Then June 5 and 6th. Belco Arena in Denver with Bill Burr. Greek Theater, June 8th with the big badass Bill Burr at uh, Berkeley. God, that's going to be so fucking cool. Then I'm headlining out in Springfield, Missouri at the Blue Room, June 21 and 22. I'm going out to Vegas for a full week, July 8th, starting at the Comedy Cellar at the Rio. Acme. I returned to Acme for four nights starting July 24th. Please get your tickets, my friends, all in advance. It really helps. And then I don't have to fucking talk about it every goddamn minute on my social media and my podcasts. Keep it just all about clean conversations without promotions, man. Anyway, I don't know. 
I'm in a pretty good mood, actually. I feel pretty good now. I woke up kind of just groggy. I took this fucking edible last night. It was a 20 milligram. And man, it just rocked me. Immediately, I was just in bed like, whoa. Like the weighted blanket was on the chest. Gertie was out. And I was over there like, I am fucked up. Candles are lit, my friends. See you this week. I'm in LA all week, popping around the comedy store and flappers and and uh, other places. And thank you for all your support. I love you guys. See you next week.